Today we are going to uh, start chapter 10, and this, is, this will be the last chapter to be covered in our syllabus, and it talks about the audit of internal control and the control risk. Uh, actually, we defined the internal control before, and we said that the internal control is a group of policies, group of procedures, manuals, that determine uh, specific actions uh, to be taken inside the company in order to achieve specific objectives, specific objective. We said then those objectives are around safeguarding the assets and keeping the operation as efficient and effective as much as we can. Actually, in that chapter, we are going to get closer to the internal control. So the first that we are going to discuss today is the three primary objectives of the effective internal control. What is the definition? As we said, we said that a system of internal control consists of policies, procedures designed to provide management with reasonable assurance that the company achieve its objectives and goals. Type. What are the main objectives and goals of the company, of the management? Is to provide course for the company to achieve profit and for the management is to provide information okay to manage the company in an effective way and to provide information at the end of the year for the users and the main user for the management is the shareholders creditors and some of the governmental entities like the tax authority for example okay so actually here the internal control must be designed in order to provide reasonable assurance reasonable assurance okay these policies and procedure are often called controls and collectively they make up the entity's internal control internal evil internal control is a collective controls what are the controls policies or procedure designed to provide management with reasonable assurance with reasonable assurance and the company is achieving its objectives and goals then the management typically has three broad objectives in designing in achieving and designing an effective internal control system type the first objective is the reliability of the financial reporting and yani management is designing the internal control primarily to make sure and there is a reliability of financial reporting and efficiency and effectiveness of operation as, as we just said and to make sure that the company is in compliance with laws and regulation because those are the three okay main objective from the internal control system let's go for the first one which is the reliability of financial reporting what do you mean by reliability of financial reporting management has both legal and professional responsibility to be sure that information is fairly presented in accordance to uh, with reporting requirements of accounting framework such as GAAP or, or IFRS. Yani the first to be assured by the internal control system that the company are preparing their financial statement, keeping their record or its record in accordance to the standards. I'm, I'm talking here GAAP or IFRS or Egyptian accounting standard depend on the standard that you are uh, using or applying. The first objective to make sure that the financial statement has been prepared according to the standards. The second is efficiency and effectiveness of operation. We have to make sure that there is an efficient and effective use of the resources of the company. Why? Because whenever you are uh, using efficient and effective, in an efficient and effective way, the resources of the company, you are minimizing the expenses and the cost, and you are maximizing sales and revenues. Okay, and that also will be leading to that the company will provide accurate financial and non-financial information about the company operation for decision making. And this will help the company taking decisions that will enhance the financial performance of the company. Three is to comply with law. For example, in USA, El Sarbanes Oxley Act section 404 we require management to issue a report about operating effectiveness of internal control over financial report yani at the end of the period the management must report 
the effectiveness of its internal control to the entities. Okay, what are those entities? Maybe the SEC, Security Exchange Commission, the Stock Exchange Market in USA. Here, I would like to reliably issue or prepare the financial statement. I have to use my resources efficiently, efficiently and effectively in order to maintain the efficiency and effectiveness of operation. Three, to comply with whatever the laws and regulations that we have. Right. Let's test your understanding. Right. And now we move to the next point, which is the management responsibilities for maintaining and reporting on internal control and the auditor responsibility for understanding, testing, and reporting on the internal control. As we said in Chapter 6, if you remember, we talked about the management responsibility and auditor responsibility in the auditing engagement. Actually, here we are more focused on the internal control. I'm discussing here what is the management responsibilities and what are the auditor responsibilities for or regarding the internal control system. Internal control system. Right. What are the main management responsibility for establishing the internal control? Actually, here, the first responsibility is that management must establish and maintain the entity's internal control, yani the establishment and the maintenance of the internal control system is the first responsibility for the management regarding the internal control. Okay. By designing an effective internal control. How to design that? Management must focus on controls that address risks related to all relevant assertions of all significant account disclosure in the financial statement. Yani when the management is designing the system, they have to take into consideration the risks to be related to the operation of the company. And if we are مثلاً, dealing with a business operation that is running مثلاً, in uh, risky places, we have to make sure that our internal control will be able to supervise this operation خلاص, in an area مثلاً, that has wars. In an area we have some uh, unstable political situations. So actually, whenever the management will design the internal control, they must have that into consideration. They have to design controls that is suitable for oversighting, supervising the operation in such uh, uh, places or in such uh, situations. Okay, And to operating effectiveness of controls, which means they have to test okay, the internal control continuously in order to maintain it or in order to improve it by taking corrective, corrective action. And to make sure in the people who is on the top of the internal control system have the necessary authority and qualification to control or to apply the internal control uh, 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 procedures in the right way. Okay, reasonable assurance. The management is providing reasonable assurance like the auditor. Because as we said also at the beginning of that chapter, and the company should develop internal controls that provide reasonable but not absolute. But not absolute. Why? Because actually nothing is absolute. We cannot provide in anything in life 100% assurance. We are providing only reasonable, which means whenever the management are developing the internal control, they have to take into consideration one of the main factors to be taken in any decision-making process is the cost and benefit. What are the costs that we are going to incur? What are the benefits that we are going to receive from designing that system? So actually here, if the cost is exceeding benefits, so actually that, that system is worthless for us. Okay, but actually whenever we are taking a system to be applied, we have to make sure that the benefit always exceeding the cost. Okay, if cost and benefit is one of the most important issue to be taken, not only in the internal control uh, establishing uh, process, but actually in all decision making process that we, that we have to do. Okay, then we have also the management have, has also to 
take into consideration the inherent limitation. What is the inherent limitation? The inherent limitation is the limitation that you have within your organization, which means if the management can design an ideal system, its effectiveness depends on the competency and the ability of the people to using it. Yani you can design a perfect system, but actually the people that you have does, does, does not have or does not have the uh, quali right qualification to run the, the system. They are not keen to uh, maintain the system. Actually, maybe you don't have enough resources, مثلا, to buy specific uh, equipment that you need to apply the system. All of that can be considered as an inherent limitation. Inherent limitation. Type. Whenever you are designing the system, again, the management, they have to take into consideration, as we said before, the cost and benefit. We have to take the inherent limitation, okay, and we have to make sure that we are providing reasonable assurance. Reasonable assurance. So maybe if you are designing a procedure for keep track, مثلا, of the inventory in your warehouse, maybe you have to have two employees in order to count the inventory independently, okay? But maybe if both or one of the two employees are careless, are not qualified enough, then the system will be, again, plus useless. Why? Because actually the persons who are on the top of the process are not qualified enough to do that, eh, to apply that system. Okay. Then we move to the Sarbanes Oxley Act. And we said before, the, what is the Sarbanes Oxley Act? And this is one of the most important acts or rules in USA plus, that is related to the internal control system and the corporate governance type. Actually, the Sarbanes Oxley require all public company to issue an internal control report, as we said before. And they have to include in that report a statement that the management is responsible for establishing and maintaining adequate internal control structure and procedure for financial reporting. Yani that report is trying to hold the management responsible for the design and maintenance of the internal control system. And they have to include, the management has to, has to include in that report that they are doing an assessment for the effectiveness of the internal control structured. Okay, the statement here or the report to be required from the Sarbanes Oxley Act will require two things: a paragraph management that, that the management is stating they are responsible for establishing and maintaining the internal control. They are stating in order to find to give them uh, 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 the accountability issue, which means whatever deviation, whatever incompetent that will be discovered. This will be the responsibility of the management because they are the person or the people who are responsible for designing the system. The responsibility here is on the shoulders of the management. And they have to state that they are, keep, they are continuously keep assessing the internal control of the company type. This is an example of the management report. This is an example of the management report, including the two paragraphs that we are talking about. Yani in the first paragraph, I'm saying that the management of Marble Corporation is responsible for establishing and maintaining adequate internal control over the financial reporting. Marble's internal control system was designed to provide reasonable assurance to the company's management and board of director regarding the preparation and fair presentation of published financial statement. In the first paragraph, the management stated they are responsible for establishing, maintaining, providing reasonable assurance. Marble management assessed the effectiveness of the company's internal control, assessed the effectiveness of the company's internal control over financial reporting as of December 31, 2011. In making this assessment, it used the criteria set forth by Committee of Sponsoring Organizations of the Tradeway Commission, which is uh, abbreviated here as COZO. And COZO is uh, the Internal Control Integrated Framework, Internal Control Integrated Framework that we are going to discuss 
later in that chapter. This is the system, the framework that gave us the main components of any effective internal control. And this is widely accepted. Widely accepted, which means it is applied everywhere in most of the countries. Okay, so actually here, we have to state that we assess the effectiveness of the internal control and the effectiveness criteria that we use is accordance to the framework, according to the framework of Kozo. Right. Based on our assessment, we believe that as of December 31, the company's internal control over financial reporting is effective based on those criteria. At the end, Marble's independent auditor have issued an audit report on our assessment of the company internal control over financial reporting. As this report appear on the following page, yani the management issued the report required according to the Sarbanes Oxley Act, and in the same time, the auditor must issue another report about the internal control, plus confirming or disconfirming according to the point of view of the auditor, the information that have been included in that report. If a management is responsible to issue a report, will auditor is responsible for issuing another report confirming, okay, or rejecting what have been mentioned in that uh, report. Okay. The management and auditor responsibility, the auditor's responsibility. What we have talked about is the management responsibility. Type. What about the auditor responsibility? Type. The auditor responsibility, the main auditor responsibility is to understand the internal control. To understand the internal, and I think during the planning okay, of the audit, and during collecting evidence, and during the uh, 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 understanding the phases of audit, we mentioned that the internal control is a key factor in determining the size of the sample the type of tests to be applied inside the uh, company uh, uh, during the audit. So actually, the auditor responsibility here is to understand the internal control. Okay, the Sarbanes Oxley Act is required that the auditor report on effectiveness of the internal control plus, and related to internal control, related to financial reporting and the classes of transaction. But actually, this what we just mentioned in the previous slide. We said that the independent auditor have issued an audit report on our assessment, right? The first here that the auditor must issue a report to confirm, as we said, alas, what have been mentioned by the management. Right. The auditor responsibility for testing. Yani, until you understood, you are going to make a report. So actually, you have to do that based on testing the internal control. Why? Because how can you? Let's form an opinion on the control without testing that internal control. So actually here, the auditor must understand and then to test the uh, uh, internal control system for all significant account balances, transactions, and disclosure of the financial state. The three management assertions that we talked about before in Chapter 6. And I said the management assertion is one of the most important issues in auditing. And this is the key of the audit process. And you are testing the controls for balances, transaction, disclosure in the financial presentation, disclosure in the financial state. You have to review the three types of assertions in relation to the internal control system. Auditor have a significant responsibility for discovery of material fraudulent financial reporting and misappropriation of assets and direct effect of illegal act. And this is this what what did we uh, explain in chapter six? The auditor is responsible for material fraud, whether it is committed by the management, so it is fraudulent financial reporting, or committed by employee, it is misappropriation of assets and the direct effect of illegal act. The violation of law that has a, a, a direct uh, impact on the financial statements, on the financial statement. Last, the auditor must emphasize on the internal control of class of transaction rather than the account balances. Why? 
because the accuracy of the accounting system output depend heavily on the accuracy of input and processing because actually the first step in any accounting cycle is the transaction but if the transaction will be recorded correctly if it is controlled properly actually most in most cases as, as we agreed we don't have class 100 percent assurance for anything so actually here we are told that whenever you are having a good control on the input most probably you will find out that the output is correct okay but actually those are the main auditor a responsibility regarding the internal control okay right. now move to the five component of code internal control framework the internal control framework, as you can see here, are included of five items. One, which is the control environment. Two, risk assessment. Three, control activities. Four, information and communication. Five, monitoring. Right. What is the COSO internal control integrated framework? Actually, as we said before, it is the framework that determine the effective internal control criteria. And it is mostly or most widely accepted framework in the United States and many Arab countries like Lebanon, Jordan, Bahrain, Kuwait, United Arab Emirates, Egypt, that management design and implement to provide reasonable assurance that its control objectives will be met. And each component contain many control, but auditors concentrate on those to design, those designed to prevent or take material misstatement. Yani, the internal control system, according to the five components of Kodo, class are defining a lot of controls. But actually, me as an auditor, because my responsibility is to find out the material misstatement, the material uh, fraud, so actually here, I, I, I concentrate always on the control related to the material misstatement. Okay. The first is the control environment. The control environment. Okay. Type. What is the control environment? It is the environment inside the company. The control environment consists of the action, policies, procedure that reflect overall attitude of the top management directors, owners of the entity about internal control and its importance to the entity. Okay, yani actually the environment inside the company is the one that can emphasize on applying the internal control system in an efficient way or in an efficient way. Okay, so actually if the top management believe the control is important, others in organization will sense this commitment and respond, okay, by taking into consideration the internal control. If the opposite, that management believes that control is not important, then management control objective will not be effectively achieved. So actually the management behavior or uh, 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 their attitude toward the implementation of the internal control can affect the other attitudes, okay, to implement the internal control in an effective. This is the first A, component of the Kodo framework and it must hear the management of course make some emphasis on integrity and ethical value okay which is the products of the company ethical and behavior standard and they have to emphasize on the commitment to competence which means no one will be hired unless he has enough knowledge and the skills to work in any position inside the company yeah, but actually two things must be taken into consideration by management, the integrity, which means whenever someone will do anything that is dishonest, they, it, he has to be punished, he has to be fired. Actually, this will spread the spirit that the internal control system is to be applied effectively. Commitment to competence, which means if you don't have the enough knowledge or the skills for the job, you will not be hired whatsoever, you will not be promoted uh, 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 whatsoever. So actually this again, is making the environment of control more accepting or more acceptable for the right control or internal control system. 
يبقى ال in control environment as you can see it is an umbrella if you have a good control environment then you can apply the other four components of the system if you don't have a good control environment so actually you will not be able to do anything right regarding the other four components that you that you have the board of directors for the audit committee actually the audit committee here is one of the main actions to be taken in order to emphasize on the good internal control system why because the audit committee is an independent person coming to monitor the internal control so actually here i'm separating the internal control department from the management in order to make sure they are doing their job good in a good way and actually the audit committee here is one of the main recommendation by the corporate governance uh, system that maintaining a good uh, control internal control system i think we are going to stop here and we are going to complete next lecture inshallah